Welcome back to Patriot Network TV. I've got a reading assignment for you today, students. I want you to get Energy and Climate Wars. It's by Glover and Economides. It is the Bible of understanding how energy is essential to economic success and how the uh, overwhelming propaganda of, well, not to put too fine a point on it, the Obama administration, but also Europe, the overwhelming propaganda about green jobs and green energy and renewable energy and sustainable energy, it's just bunk. The numbers are not there. And what Dr. Economides and Mr. Glover lay out in this book is chapter and verse exactly how much energy we use and how little of that comes from solar, wind, and other renewable resources. Now, not only is it irrational to move away from coal, which provides half the energy, you know, worldwide half is coal. The United States, it's between 40 and 60%, depending on which source you go to. If you're gonna get rid of half the energy and say, oh gee, we're gonna to go to solar and wind, keep in mind that solar and wind, the solar only works when the sun's out, and that's the best case scenario, and the wind only works when the wind's blowing. So you're talking about whenever the wind blows, you can get the turbines to work, and whenever the sun's out, basically a third of the time, you can get the panels to work. Now if you think that portion of the overall energy portfolio that is representative of basically 1%, maybe a percent and a half of total production for power in the United States, if you think that can you know, move aside, replace coal, which is somewhere, and again, depending on how you want to do these numbers, between 40% at the low and 60% at the high, most people would go with half, half the power from coal. If you think that can happen, you know, then you need to have a serious talk with a mental health professional because you're not being rational. And beyond the absolute limit in the intensity of power that's generated from coal, from natural gas, from oil shale, from crude oil, from all of the various quote-unquote so-called fossil fuels, it is important to realize that the twin lies of restricting the use of these fuels. The twin lies have basically been disproven. The first lie was peak oil, that's easy to disprove. The second lie is global warming. And as the recent experiments done at CERN showing that cosmic rays have between 50 and 100% of the effect on global climate, we can easily dispense with those two issues. Now, if you read this book, you will find out that from the beginning of oil extraction until today, we've taken a trillion barrels out of the ground. Then you will find out that in proven and probable reserves, we have somewhere between 12 and 16 trillion barrels or barrel of oil equivalents in the ground now. It's very, very difficult to claim that we're at a peak, that is, we're to the halfway point, we're on the back half of the resources we have, especially when you understand that every decade we improve our oil gathering technology and the amount of oil that we've used goes up and the amount of oil that we can discover and use in an economically recoverable fashion also goes up. And then there's the pure economics of the matter, and I want to quote directly from the book here, we're on page 87. Uh, we're talking about how much oil is available just in the Green River Formation. If 200 billion barrels of oil at $90 a barrel are recovered from the Green River Formation, the added wealth of the U.S. economy is $18 trillion. Now the estimate on the amount of oil that is in the Green River Formation runs from 1.4 trillion to 1.9 trillion. So 18 trillion is a very, very low estimate. If we took a trillion barrels of oil at $90 a barrel out of there, we're talking about $90 trillion in revenues. We're talking about enough oil, fees, taxes, employment, to zero out the U.S. federal debt. We're talking about the difference between being a first world power and being a third world power. And it is all to do with oil, coupled with the other boogeyman, energy. Now, if you look at these numbers, if you understand these numbers, and again, 
quoting them directly. What we have sought to show here is that while we may have used around one trillion barrels of the world's oil, it is a small fraction of the estimated, current estimated 12 to 16 trillion that remains. So if you wanted to argue peak oil, we'd have to be at 8 trillion, 9 trillion, 10 trillion barrels of consumption. We're nowhere near that. We're not even at a tenth of that. So not only do we have to develop oil if we're going to get out of the current mess we're in, we want to make oil, oil shale, oil hydrates, coal, all of the forms of energy that we have, we want to make them central to our economic recovery. Now, for those of you who are baby boomers, and we boomers are retiring at the rate of 10,000 a day, if you're a boomer and you like being a greenie, I want to clear you up on something. Social Security's bankrupt. There's not a penny in there. I got more money in my wallet than is in Social Security. Social Security has bonds, special treasury bonds, that they're going to have to start to sell. We're already, with the current expansion and the debt ceiling, we're 16, 17 trillion bucks upside down. You add in the other government agencies, Freddie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, we're 25 trillion upside down. That means very quickly, greeny social security wannabe recipients, we're gonna have to have money come in from somewhere or we gotta cancel social security. There is no money there. If you wanna get your social security, you older greenies, you're gonna have to embrace oil, oil shale, tar sands, nuclear, you're going to have to embrace every one of these because the only way for the United States to survive the tsunami of baby boomer retirement, 80, somewhere between 78 million and 83 million baby boomers are going to retire at the rate of 10,000 a day from here on out. If you want your social security check, you better start embracing oil because otherwise you're not getting it. Alrighty folks, this is your reading assignment. God bless you. God bless the USA.